Okay, this next presentation is scheduled for 90 minutes. We're a few, a few minutes late. Um, I think I might have the parts needed. Paul, it's basically the Traco. Yeah. I, I think I might have a whole mess of them in a box for the... Uh, uh, oh, no, I think uh, Tate's might have ordered one, but there's one we can desolder off of a board that I don't have potted. 12s? For the signal generator. Yeah, okay. All right, so um, for the next presentation, um, our next presenter is a uh, retired chiropractor who lives down in the uh, uh, Boise area, uh, down in uh, southern Idaho. And uh, over the years, uh, him and one of his associates, uh, Norman, who he considers his go-to man as the uh, expert for a lot of the things that you've kind of seen over this weekend, free energy and, and other related concepts. And uh, years ago, Norm had known uh, John Bedini, and they collaborated on some different projects. And uh, Mike has been involved um, with Norman, and they had been looking at developing uh, some type of motor generator system. Uh, uh, Mike has uh, presented um, two, I think maybe three times at, la at the last uh, several uh, energy science technology conferences, first coming in and just demoing a very loud motor in the back room at the Eagles Lodge that you could hear through the entire building because the thing was just screaming. And um, then he eventually presented on it and little by little by little, it, uh, the efficiency, the COP kept uh, increasing, increasing, increasing over the time. Paul had been, Paul Babcock was very instrumental in helping to develop a little bit more sophisticated uh, switching circuits than what you might find like in a Bedini SG. And with the recovery, and, and um, it it's really embodies a lot of the concepts that John told about and told people to do, but they never really did when they, you know, if you listen to Paul's talk about just sticking with the regular SG, is a learning tool, uh, but there's a lot more there than uh, meets the eye. Uh, this next presentation is Reactive Power Generator. I just called it 2022 because I didn't know what else to call it. I think this is the fourth one. So please help uh, welcome Mike Clark. Oh, there's the corner. Okay. Thank you. So the machine that we had before was a, was a glorified air raid siren. That's what I say. I mean, because of the way we designed it, you know, it was sucking air in, compressing it, and pushing it out. And, and I just remember a few years ago, I got, I got up here, and it was one of the times when I got up here and everything worked. And I, had the, and I spun that thing up, I had it running like 3,600 RPM. And, Aaron comes in, shut that off, because <laughs> so, he could hear it everywhere. It was, it, that's the way that was. And, when, and if you noticed, if you were watching uh, Rollins' presentation yesterday, when he sh got to the end and he showed the machine and he had the, he had the earmuffs on and everything, you, ha you had to do that. Or it just had this piercing damn noise that you had to deal with all the time. So <coughs> we decided something would have to be done. We had to build the, the model, we had to build the mold. And so we, we uh, on the, the CAD program, we designed the armature, split it into four pieces, and printed it on the, on the uh, laser printer, or the 3D printer, rather. And Paul did one, and when I tried to put it together, it didn't fit right. And so I printed, I printed one, and I tried to put it together, it didn't fit. The third one got it right. So we, we did that and we made this silicon mold. Now that mold is good for about 500 copies. Cost, that material cost just under $1,000 to, to build that, the full mold. And, uh, and so it's not something you want to make mistakes on. So, you know, it's like, Andy! And so we built the box and we built, so we had to, we had to mold, we had to build half the mold and then we had to build the other half and so that they would fit together and everything. You can see that there's these indexers on there all, all around. And uh, like here, here, that one broke off when we took it apart the first time, but it, it works just fine. And so you can see we have the channel for the, the shaft and everything else. Night after night, I'm up till 11.30, 12.30 at night. Now for somebody like Paul, that's nothing, but you know, I'm usually in bed by 9.30, so. But, so, we working on making this stator case, because I really wanted that in because it would have brought the magnets and the coils in closer proximity, which would have increased the proficiency of the motor, something fierce. And so, anyway, that's, that's the, 
just the stuff that's happened this year. So, so we glued the magnets in. I built this contraption to hold that all in, put the magnets, it put the coils all on there, got those epoxied into the PVC that it's made out of. And, <clears throat> and it was really fun because Andy, Andy was next door and he says, boy, I'd like to see what you're doing on your motor. I says, well, come on over. And I, it, originally I had put all of these coils in parallel. They were all paralleled. And he came over and I just barely spun that thing and it just took off. And I was going like, holy crap, this is so cool. And not only that, but it spun up and we could just talk just kind of like we are right now. Just didn't make any noise. It was so smooth and so quiet. And it was charging back to the batteries. And, and it, it, it was phenomenal. It, but the problem was then we started having a problem because of the, the power we were getting, it, we had a problem with heat, and we were blowing up the diodes. We have a diode on there that's supposed to protect everything. It blew up the diode, and when the diode blew up, it blew up all the other semiconductors. The SCR, MOSFETs, everything else was shot. So I thought, and so we were testing it, and we said, well, let's do four in, four in series, and then four in series and parallel them together. So we did. We've done all the rest of our testing and running of it in that configuration. And with that configuration, we've, we've been able to attain fairly good speeds, but, but uh, it's been really interesting because the other machine, the old machine, only had six coils on it. It was a six-coil machine. And so you, you had lots of room to move. And this one, everything is a lot more sensitive. It's a lot touchier. And so getting things dialed in is really kind of crazy. But we're, de we're dealing with all of these these well, I'd call it a comedy of errors that, that has happened. And it, a lot of it just started with that shaft being 214 stainless instead of 316 stainless. And so, but even at that, let me tell you the difference. So on the old motor with the six poles, when we were running that, we would regularly be running at, and especially on startup, we would be up at 30, 35, 40 amps input on that to run, to get that thing up and started. This thing here has not gone over 17 amps, not once. When we start this thing up, it might be at 10 or 12 amps. That's all it is. It take, it, I mean, it is so much heavier. This thing is so heavy. I mean, it, it is so, if I go back to when we cast this thing, so when I set up the casting, I set it up on the floor of my shop, and we had it there, and, and we poured it on the floor. And so after a day or two of curing, I, I was going to take it, you know, had the big unveiling. And I thought, well, I don't want to be on my hands and knees doing this. And I went to pick it up. And damn, that's heavy. That, that silicon is heavy. And then this thing weighs a lot. I mean, it's really heavy. And I, so I called Andy over. Hey, Andy. And I said, I, I want to put it up on the table. <laughs> and he, even with two people, he didn't want to pick it up. <laughs> He said, we'll do it right here because of the weight of it. The, the, the weight of this armature is tremendous. So we have, when it's running, we have all of that inertia going. And since we put these new, these are new stainless steel bearings, $200 a copy. And uh, since we put those on there, this thing freewheels and runs so much easier and smoother. Who in their right mind in 1980 or 1986 or 1990 thought you would have this kind of computing power in your pocket all the time. When you, go to, when you go to NASA, when you go to Cape Canaveral and you go into that room where they had all of those computers, they had banks of computers that don't come close to the computing power that I hold in my hand right here. Who would have thought that? Who would have thought that you could tell the power companies to take a hike because I got my own power? Yes, I'm older, and I forgot why I came up here. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I forgot no. what I was going to tell you. <laughs> Seri seriously, uh, you talked a lot about the stainless steel shaft, and you went to the, stain the metal shop, and you bought the shaft. You built the rotor, and yeah. now it's heating everything up. Did you take a magnet with you and put it on the stainless steel? Oh, no, steel? that would have been smart. There you go, boys and girls. Take a magnet with you. 
<laughs> yeah, because, it, I, I mean, I said, is that 316 stainless? And he said, oh, yeah, that's 316 stainless. It, when you go to the shops, the, those, those metals are all color-coded. They, they, have, they have different colors painted on them to tell you what, what kind of material that is. When we get it fired up, it's going to be the racehorse of racehorses. So our goal is to have a kilowatt out of that thing, and all the mass says we'll meet it. So that's the deal. 20, a kilowatt 24-7 frees you from the man. Yeah. You can do a whole lot with, 24, with a kilowatt per hour. But I saw this, I, I saw this program on, it was, a, it was a, they replayed this program from, uh, from NBC talking about the vulnerability of the grid. Well, you've had people literally trying to take down the grid. And so if that happens, what happens? I mean, everything shuts down. I remember when I was in practice, I think some swan or something flew into a transformer or something in Northern California, and power was out from th throughout California, Nevada, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, British Columbia, part of Alberta. I mean, it was all shut down. One incident, and it just shut everything down. Well, we don't have to live like that. We don't have to live with that fear. We can have our own power, powering our own homes. And we don't owe anybody. It is an independence that you will not realize how valuable it is until you have it. When you can't have a quasi-governmental agency backed up by its governmental agencies trying to squash your every move if you, if you don't toe the line. Damn it, this is America. Now, I was born and raised in Canada, but I am a son of the American Revolution. Literally, I am. My great-great-great-great-grandfather fought in the Revolutionary War. I'm going to tell you, the Stars and Stripes mean something to me, and the Constitution means something to me, and freedom means a lot to me. That's why I live where I live. Any other questions? Online? Okay. They want to know what regiment he was in? Are you entertaining full-scale production, or how do you plan to share your information, sell your information, so on? We are, we are in the process of trying to get to full, like Paul said, uh, and Roland was talking about, we are working at getting uh, our, our production up and going. We're 36 minutes ahead of schedule, um, relative to the time that Mike started and not when we were supposed to start. So um, what are we going to do, maybe take a uh, 15, 20 minute break, see what happens and if, if that works we'll do the demo real quick and if not we'll just set up some tables and get on with the panel discussions. And uh, these guys will probably be here all afternoon. So we'll see you back in the seats in about maybe yeah, 15 minutes or so. Thank you. Um, also, <clears throat> I want to announce whoever is here in the building right now, if all the conversations in the back can, if all the conversations can maybe stop for a moment, if somebody's talking next to you, tap them on the shoulder and ask them to Okay, thank you. So tomorrow, um, Bill, you know, can you raise your hand? So Mr. Bill Conley over here has a beautiful, giant historical mansion up on the South Hill here in Spokane. If you happen to be in town tomorrow evening, uh, about what time, Bill? I'm gonna say like five o'clock or like five or something? So we'll say 5 o'clock at his house. Everybody is invited for barbecue, drinks, and everything else. It's, um, the address is 1405 West 9th. Can I have a show of hands of who might be able to make that if you're in town tomorrow evening? Aaron? Can't Mike? Aaron bring your own food. Bring your own food? Okay, bring your own food, but there is a barbecue that you can throw stuff on the grill and everything. And 
Um, there's a uh, Rosar's and Huckleberry's grocery store just two blocks down. If you're looking for a bunch of organic food, that's on the corner of like 14th and uh, Monroe.